This is Digital Air Air, your fitness AI. Today we're going to talk about the algorithms of cardiovascular exercises. In this video, I'm going to talk about the physical and the metaphysical aspects and benefits of cardiovascular activities. Now, a lot of coaches uh, don't have their clients do cardio, and a lot of online influencers deliberately tell their, um, their viewers not to do cardio. I think that's a mistake. It's a great sales pitch, but ultimately, I think cardio has a lot of mental and physical benefits that cannot be overlooked. Cardio is a great way to test the mentality and the mental discipline of an athlete. I think generally, if you're the type of people who could get through a cardio session um, consistently, months, years, or the type of people who just like doing cardio and can take the pain, especially HIIT, which I'm gonna get into later what that means, which is a soul killer, then you are more likely to succeed in any fitness course. Aside from the obvious, which is general well-being and health, cardio is also great for maximizing your work capacity. See, back in 2010 to 2013, when I was doing my dirty walking, I didn't do cardio at all because I was under the belief and assumption that cardiovascular exercises would kill your gains. I put on a lot of fat excessive fat that could otherwise be avoided if I just did cardio once a week. And I spent a lot of extra time because all this um, fat adds up. Like the, 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 see, if, if you do cardio just 20 minutes a week, take that time frame, edit all that up together during your bulking phase versus the time that you spend and waste on cutting those fat if you didn't do cardio during your cutting phase and you'll see why you wasted so much time and you could have been gaining more muscles when you're still cutting those fat that otherwise wouldn't be there if you were cutting them. Other than that, my work capacity had increased over the last three to five years because I was incorporating cardio to my routine consistently. Work capacity means how much work, how much sets, how much reps, and even how much weight you can lift in X amount of time. Basically your condition. Even powerlifters, they do some kind of cardio like sled dragging in order to increase their work capacity so that they could do more in shorter amount of time which leads to more muscle gains and more strength gains cardio is also great for aiding recovery if you do cardio after your workout either on off days which i recommend but if you're working out five times a week you should do cardio after the gym session because you want your CNS to be fresh when you go to the weight room. It promotes blood circulation all over your body and it drives the nutrients into the muscles through again blood circulation and decreased soreness level. Cardio also allows you to eat more food while you are walking or cutting or maintaining. And who doesn't like to eat more food? Eating more calories and doing cardio versus not eating as much calories and doing no cardio makes a difference. Why? Because number one, if you are able to eat more calories, that means you could have more energies at the gym. And number two, the reason why I think I have so much veins and that my vascularity is always on point is because I do a lot of cardio. I'm gonna be shredded at the same time that you Now there are two types of cardio. M-I-S-S, miss, or H-I-I-T, hit. MISS stands for low to moderate intensity steady state cardio. HIT stands for high intensity interval training. For MISS, basically just slow walk. You can either do this on the treadmill, which is easier for you to try the amount of calories you burn, or you can do it on the road, outside, at the park, at the mall. One of my favorite things to do is to just walk in a circle in a very small room. The limited amount of space allows my mind to circle in into a spiral and to reach infinity. Now it doesn't matter what type of cardio you do and where you do it, the most important thing and the only thing that really matters is the number of calorie burned. For HIIT high intensive interval training, you basically run sprints at moderately high speed, I would say 85 to 95% of your max effort speed. You sprint anywhere from 15 to 25 seconds and you slow walk for 40 to 45 seconds. My standard protocol is 20 and 40. You could also do this on the treadmill or outside. I like to sprint outside in the middle of the road 
because then I could sort of like my Tom Cruise video, I can create my own obstacles, either chasing after cars or running away from cars to avoid getting hit. Now, how much cardio should you do? Now, this is gonna be a very general outline. Each individual is different, depending on your metabolism level and your goals and your history of training and stuff like that. But generally, I would say if you're cutting, if you're 140 to 170 pounds, you should do MISS twice a week, burning anywhere from 300 to 500 calories per session, two HIIT sessions a week, anywhere from four to six sprint twice a week. If you're 150 to 180 pounds, 350 to 450 calories per MISS session twice a week, HIIT five to eight sprints twice a week. If you're 180 to 200 pounds and above, 400 to 500 calories twice a week on the miss, and the five to eight sprints twice a week on the hit. If you're bulking and you're 140 to 170 pounds, you do miss once a week, burning anywhere from 250 to 300 calories per week. If you're 150 to 180 pounds, 350 calories once a week. If you're 180 to 200 pounds plus, anywhere from 350 to 400 calories once a week. And uh, usually I don't do hits during my bulking phase. If you're maintaining, I would say the cardio protocol is the same as when you're bulking, except I would add one HIIT session per week, anywhere from four to six sprints. Now, if your goal is cutting and you're trying to aim for one pound per week, and if for some whatever reason, your weight stopped going down this week, or if you gain, you would just want to throw in an extra session of cardio, either hit or miss or both. And if you're uh, bulking, if you're not gaining, cut back on the cardio a little bit. Now, let's get into the metaphysical aspects of cardiovascular activities. For miss, I love doing that. I love just long walks because a lot of my ideas come when I am on long walks. The legs are like paddles that stirs the brain and you get psyched up about new insights and ideas and the brain in turn generates dopamine and sends more signals to the legs to cycle faster and further in a positive feedback loop. See, my favorite two material objects in this world are the brain and shoes insights and new fresh creative ideas that just come to you from beyond the mind and the space between two thoughts is where the ideas new ideas come it's kind of like the space between a joke and a laughter a lot of our thinking abilities are related to space there's a huge portion of our brain dedicated to spatial processing we're evolved to be visual animals because back in the days our ancestors need to keep a visual perception of where all the predators are and how you move around and relate to space uh, has a lot to contribute to your cognitive functions and even things like abstract reasoning uh, is largely spatial um, Stephen Hawkins if he didn't end up in a wheelchair um, I would put my bet on it that he would come up with even more groundbreaking breakthroughs. Um, thinkers like Einstein's and Darwin's and Schopenhauer's sworn on walking and how it affects their thinking and how walking a couple hours a day is just part of the daily routine. So what I do is I'll go out for a walk and I'll also do my walking meditation which you know, keeps me away from thinking too hard about whatever the problems I have in life or in, in, my, in my work. And um, for active meditation or walking meditation, it's basically the same idea as any kind of standard mindfulness meditation. Instead of paying attention to your breath and directing your awareness to the breath, you direct your awareness to your feet. You try to observe down to the very microscopic level if you go down deep enough. I also find it easier to retain information when I go on for walks. So I'll listen to podcasts, audiobooks, or lectures when I walk, again, to kill two birds with one stone. It's always ideal when you're training your mind and your body at the same time until they become one and the same. Now, I don't know the scientific reason behind this, but if you take yourself out of your routine, if you just always read your book, or always listen to a lecture or a podcast on the computer, always sit in the same spot. But if you go out for a walk, you, your brain, at least for me, uh, associates the information that is taken in with whatever scenery or whatever visual imagery that I'm 
um, perceiving when I'm going out for a walk and just seeing different things. So the, 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 the information that I'm obtaining um, gets associated with the images that I'm seeing in my perception and they link, link up together. And then when I try to, you know, remember those information, I can just, oh, okay, I was listening to this when I saw that. And that just creates a deeper dent in my mind. Now for hit, I think sprinting is very trippy. I always wonder what goes on in the minds of Olympic sprinters when they take their body to the max effort speed. Or think about the Flash. I think the Flash is the most psychedelic superhero out there because he's basically undergoing a DMT or a selfie trip every time he uh, sprint near the speed of light. So much so that he's able to bend space time and then jump across dimension. So basically when I go out for a sprint, this is how I motivate myself. I'm able to get a natural hit of the empty trick. Now a word about vascularity. So a lot of people ask me how I get my veins. You know, I don't you can't really train for your veins, but I think cardio might have something to do with it. My veins are like trees without leaves in the sky. They connect to the air and redirect it into the ground, which ground me like the stillness in meditation, transferring the energy back and forth. So the more striations veins you have, the more oxygen you can obtain, and the deeper the roots are to suck up more nutrients and wisdom. Love you, bro.